Tony Mowbray was the captain who turned Bruce's dreams into reality on the pitch. All Borough fans love Mugger, and the fans magazine Flying at the Moon is based on a map made by Bruce when he said he would take him in a flight into space. But Mugger's feet have always remained firmly in the ground. He was my great captain and inspirational leader on the pitch and as we gained back-to-back -back promotions in 87 and 88, he wasn't a shouter but a true leader by example. We would have followed him anywhere, played anyone and believed we could win. Many Borough fans think he will manage the club one day and he's learning the management trade in Scotland with Hibernian. I wonder if he needs a striking coach. <laughs> Tony Mowbray hey, on the man. wing. How are you, mugger? I know you do your press conference, but we'll have a chat afterwards. That's all right. I'm here to see you. I'm coming no in and listening. How are you doing? You all right? Just killing. Hi, you can, all right. Could have scored more goals than you did. Is he? Hardly even like that. Is he? Yeah. So you go and do your bit, and we'll you? see you after it. Yeah. Are you coming in? Are you coming in? Yeah, we'll come in and look. No, we'll come in. I want to hear the mug, but I'm going to drop a few things then. Bruce Rear. I mean, I look back, I keep saying, was Bruce your dad? I mean, Bruce Rear. <laughs> Every time I used to look at you and Bruce, I mean, on one occasion he says he wants to take you to the moon. He did, I. And sometimes I wish he would have took you to yeah, the moon. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I don't know why that came, but I, you know me, I, I, I am what I am. I, I, don't, I don't feel as I've got any faultiness about my personality. I don't feel I ever, you know, licked up to Bruce or, mm -hmm. or anything no, like that. No, you didn't, no. I, 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 I try to just do what I did, and, and if people see certain things in your personality or your character, then you know, I, I couldn't stop Bruce saying things like yeah. he would take me to the moon. I just tried to play and, and be his... You know, I live my life through certain virtues of integrity and honesty and, mm -hmm. and that's the way I try and manage my football club. What's your uh, fondest memories? I mean, I've got a great picture mm -hmm. of me and you at um, Stamford Bridge. Yeah. We gained yeah. promotion at the top yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. one of your better memories? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, I think that was a great day. Even though, you know, if, if you want to be pernickety about it, we actually lost that game, eh? 1-0, but... Um, the, the accomplishment of getting to the Premier League was 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 an amazing feat from where we'd come from, I think. And um, you know, we were still pretty much. I remember the almost arrogance really of Chelsea, even though we'd beat them two 0 at home. They were still very, very arrogant, sort of thinking that they were going to go through. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, it was a, a special atmosphere. There was some noise generated in the stadium that day, considering they still had the old shed, and it was you know a long way from the pitch. Yeah. The noise that they generated that That's day. That's the fastest I've ever moved. Do you remember yeah. when the whistle went? <laughs> I was centre forward. I was nearest to the fans. Yeah, yeah. You had all disappeared, yeah. and I turned around, and there was hordes of. Chelsea, Chelsea fans running my way. The fence, I, I didn't move that day. I wasn't <laughs> slow that day. <laughs> when you see Slaven and yeah. Teesside, you say tap in, Mitch, and oh, mm. offside Charlie. Yeah. They've got one. Yeah, yeah no, right fair comment. I don't well, think, I, mean, I think that's unfair. Well, first and foremost, let me say that. <laughs> Only last week I've been complaining that our strikers don't score the type of goals you scored. It's now you scored plenty of scrappy goals, but yeah. you scored plenty of, of, Off my br ear. of brilliant goals that. You know, the ones in my mind are the one where you're coming, you're driving in down the right, you're cutting on your left foot, you, you know, you beat a flailing leg from a defender, and you just bend it round a diving goalkeeper into the bottom corner. It's like so easy. It's almost as if you could pick it up and place it in that bottom corner, and uh, and that comes from repetition because I often remember you daily, uh, day after day, checking 10, 20 balls, and just you know, goalie just bending that practice, that side mm -hmm. foot bend with a bit of yeah. pace. But, um, you know, what about Wembley? I mean, you yeah. you were injured that day. I wasn't. I? And you were given, well, you yeah. led us out. So yeah, you were yeah. doing the manager's role. Yeah. It was How did that feel as a, as a borough lad yeah, I've still to got lead the your team out for the first Wembley yeah. appearance ever? We've been yeah. in about five or six, yeah, now, yeah. but that was the first. Well, it was, first and foremost, very humbling, really, you know, it's, and it was a, some gesture from Toddy because Bruce had left a week or two earlier, I think, and, mm -hmm. and Toddy. He probably didn't feel it was if it was his team, and he maybe thought it was the right thing to do for him. Great, and I've still got that picture up on the wall at home with me in, in a, a rather loud blue blazer walking out the team at the at the front. Yeah, it was with the bleached blonde hair. <laughs> That's the one, mate. <laughs>
football can take itself too seriously, up its own backside as I like to say, but in a dress room you need characters, people who when things aren't going well can lift you with a bit of a laugh. John Henry is from Glasgow like me and was one of Colin Todd's signings for the Borough in 1990. <laughs> Talk about Toddy, the day we were on Ersam Park Tough, it was a Friday we were, Toddy named the team for the following day. And you went up front. What was all that about? In place of me. You were a winger, weren't you? No, I could play anywhere, Bernie. Good players can play Versatile. anywhere. Versatile. Uh, versatile, yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it was... Uh... Do you remember that day? Do you remember the laugh? Do you remember when Toddy, <laughs> Toddy had named the team? And, yeah. it, and it went through the team. You were playing up front with whoever, Walco or whoever. Yeah. And, and I stormed away. It was and and it was I, I, I put my arm around him saying, it's a joke. I says, you're never a centre forward. You're a winger, Hendel. And what did you reply? I said, I scored 18 goals last year in uh, Bradford. And, 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 and you says... 18? Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I'm right, you've never been a striker, that's what he's saying. <laughs> and he created a good goal for Mo, and let's see what he can do this time. Seems to be surrounded by the blue shirts, but he slipped that one through nicely. Here's Paul Wilkinson across, and a total miskick. It might still open the way for Bernie Slaven. 2 0. Slaven's the man again. I remember a time we were playing in Portsmouth in the cup as well. Portsmouth and FA Cup at home. Yeah. Right? some Park. Yes, I was on the bench. Right, you were on the bench. Toddy, but it's okay. uh, Toddy. Right. Uh, Toddy, I think. No, go on. Right. Darren, Darren Anderton. Corner kick. Corner kick. Yeah. Darren Anderson sort of. Right. Anyway, you're warming up yeah. behind him. And you have a right pop and she's, hey, Ander, Ander, you're, you're, having a mare. you're having a mare, you're crap, you're useless. Yeah, I did. And one or two other, other unsavory words. Yeah. Right. And what happened to the corner kick, Danny? It's going from it. <laughs> What about the, um, you remember the, the, the promotion game, the final game against Wills? It was ending towards a 0-0 draw, wasn't it? Then they went 1-0 up, and Andy much is over sort of going all the Borough fans. Yeah. Oh, no, I forget that. And then who, got, course, who, got, who got that equaliser? It was you your remember? mate, wasn't it? No, but do you remember the... It was your mate, was it, uh, it was John Gittins, wasn't it, the shank? Do you remember, I used to say to get out training, what? when he used to shank the balls. He used to look there, get on the ball, you see like shank in the stand, and I used to see you get a big wet fish in your boot. Yeah. <laughs> Could they win it here? They could! It's in off the upright! Do you remember after the game, we got a few pictures, I've got a good picture in the house that all the team are all half naked. You actually look quite fit by then. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, on the bench, I'm still on the team, the team won it, giving it one of them. Yeah, and I handed so, Lenny a cigar. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lenny's face, he was like sort of like this, as if it was going to explode. Why would you, why did you what think? What did they do with it? I know they'd like to have shoved it, but... <laughs> Some managers like you as a person, as a player, like both. Mm -hmm. Lenny didn't like me anyway, shape or form. I have something to tell you, Lenny yeah. Bennett. Name did I On the cliff. Away from the borough and one of my greatest achievements was to carry the Republic of Ireland skips around Italy in the World Cup 1990. But seriously, being part of Jack Charlton's squad was a privilege. So how does a Scot from Glasgow end up playing in the green of Ireland? Well, it's not down to owning an Irish setter. Sorry, Jack, the joke does it even what now. It's down to that word again, luck. My grandparents were from Ireland. The rest was down to Jack. Well, I'm nearly sure it was Morris that said to me, there's a Bernie Slavin that's gone to Middlesbrough. You should go and have a look at him. He's scoring a few goals and he's not a bad player. So I went and saw you. And what did you think? I thought you were quite a good player, actually. But I remember the day you phoned, um, Bruce Rear called me and said, Jack Charlton phoned you Monday morning. And I got the call and I remember you saying, all right then, uh, give us your, what's your, your background. Yeah, yeah. And I says, Jack, I've got an Irish set. <laughs> I've got an Irish set and they went down like a lead balloon. You didn't laugh and I thought, dear me, I've blown it. <laughs> well, just... I was being serious, you see. You were being so daft. Daft. <laughs>
thing is, Bernie, did you enjoy the Irish? Of course I did. Yeah. You enjoyed it. I mean, that I was did. that was part of it. I mean, I was quite lenient with the players at times. Yeah, I think you were. To you a know. degree. I mean, we used to go, we used to go, I remember on a Monday night we got the pictures. Yeah. And we went into Dublin and we went to the pictures. And then on the way back, the lads would sing, we love you, Jackie, we do. Do you remember? We love yeah. you, Jackie. And I used to say, okay, we'll stop for a pint. We had some good players. I mean, people like Ronnie Whelan and Mark Lawrence and Frank Stapleton and we had Packy Bonner in goals. Yeah. We, we, had, we had basically, we had a very, very good side of 11. It was the other ones that I was short of, the ones that would replace them if anything happened, mm -hmm. which is why we went and got you. You see, the Pope was one of the highlights for me anyway. Why did you take this? I mean, you're non-Catholic, but you took all the lads. Why, why did you go there? Really, it was McBurn, you know, the, yeah. Mick, the trainer. Mick's a very devout Catholic lad. And when, when we qualified to play in the World Cup, he came to me and he said, our boss, he said, uh, when we get to Rome, you'll get us in to see the Pope, won't you? <laughs> I, said, I said, Mick, if we get the room, pal, I'll get you in to see the Pope. Because that was where the final was going to be yeah. played. And I didn't think we had a prayer to get into the right. final. However, we got to play them in the quarterfinal in Rome. And Mick came to see me a couple of days before. And I said, yeah, Mick, it's a bit short notice, but I'll do my best. And I got in touch with Bishop Farquhar from the north of Ireland and Father Liam Boyle, who used to travel with us. You know my Father Liam Boyle? Mm -hmm. And uh, between them, they got us an audience with the Pope. Met Bishop Farquhar playing, I was playing golf in Sligo. Mm -hmm. I've just come back from Rome, he said, I've, I've retired. He said, I've just come back. I went out to see John, he said, got to go and see John when I've retired, you see him. He's got to, got to see him first. And he said, and he asked how you were. And I went, you were? He said, yeah, Pope John asked how you were. He said, and how was Mr. Charlton? He said, well. And I went, I was going to go, I don't believe you. And then I thought, well, I can't because he's a bishop, you know. I had great time with the Republic and it rubbed off in Borough as the goals continued to flow. But as with everything, it couldn't go on forever. Lenny Lawrence was a manager who eventually got rid of me. We didn't see eye to eye, and there was always a bit of friction. It wasn't all bad under Lenny. We got to the semi-final of the League Cup as I scored at Old Trafford in the second leg, getting one over on Pally. Sadly, time for me was running out. I scored my final Borough goal in front of the Hallgate end against Manchester United in the Premier League on October the 3rd, 1992. Things dragged on for a while, but my last appearance was as substitute on 2nd of March 1993 in a 1-0 win at Ipswich. After more than 380 games and 147 goals, I left Borough for Port Vale. It was the hardest decision of my life, but I knew I had no future under Lenny. I did get a chance to score once more at Ersum, playing in Stephen Pearce's testimonial in 1995 and had a last jump in the Hallgate fence. My manager that night, good old Lenny. I did OK at Port Vale, scoring in the Otter Glass Trophy final at Wembley as we beat Stockport. And not only did I pick up a winner's medal, but Lenny Lawrence was working on TV and gave me man of the match. But I never really settled in the potteries and accepted a transfer to Darlington after just 33 appearances. The move to the Quakers was a mistake. And although at Darlington I scored the 200th goal of my career, my days as a player were numbered. My back injury became serious. It was all over. Ali was working with Dave Roberts and Malcolm Allison doing the Borough game for Century FM. Big Mal is a larger than life character. After using the F word in there, frustrations boiled over. Mal had to go. I was given the chance to take over the mic. Schedule. Obviously today I got up about half eight, nine o'clock. 
and um, go and feed the animals and then come in, get a breakfast, wash and shave, get ready, go to the game. I usually get to the park about um, half eleven and obviously a uh, big game today. This is what he does, he kicks. Oh, you, you want your dinner? Hey, hey. Get some gnashers, isn't he? Yeah, when I retire, I'll be, I'll be sitting here with my, my big pipe, my slippers and my stick, reminiscing of the good old days. As me and Pally do that now, to be honest. There's a few people saying, I hope, he, I hope the razor slips and cuts his throat. Ain't a few saying that? I don't, want, I, I don't want to retire ever. I want to keep going. I love the game. I love watching it. I love talking about it. Uh, I love having an opinion. And uh, I'm a Borough fan. Uh, my kids are Borough fans. Uh, I just love it. Well, this is it. On my way to the riverside, it's what, half 11. Um, get there in about 25 minutes time. Meet up with Ali. We usually do a pre-match ritual. We have a chat, walk around the perimeter of the pitch. Uh, and hopefully that brings us a bit of luck. Yeah, look at that, look. Yeah, Ali Brownlee, look. Join the brick road. That's my brick. You've been called a few things. <laughs> it sounds like brick. <laughs> So the five minutes field, downing left, it's Morrison, Mendy, yep. Catamo, and Botang, and up front, you could Good enough, though, is that? Good enough to keep it down to three. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that? Wait, you hear this again, right? <laughs> We're going to get a result today. We're going to get a result. I can feel it in the water. He's related to Brownlee. He's not going to be I played here on about two or three occasions. One was my, I have to say, disappointing testimonial game. Another two were, were charity events. So I played here several occasions, I've enjoyed every minute, but I'd love to play here and see a derby game, Newcastle United, capacity crowd, and to score a couple against the Geordies. I'd love nothing better. It's a fantastic stadium. I mean, Steve Gibson has promised us the Riverside training facilities, a cup, and he's delivered everything. And uh, it's, a, it's a good stadium.
shows you, but I can't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to be shouted at by the fans? Notorious. Well, when our team beat the champions 3-0, they are singing my name. I thought they'd forgotten about me. The chipper was agile and he, it was a fantastic save, but what a strike from Rockin' back. He does look Brazilian today. He looks like Pele today. <laughs> Truly magnificent. I mean, that word gets used, Leslie, but truly magnificent. What rate was phenomenal. We played some great stuff. I said, I'll tell you what, rocking back, Manny Mac, looked Brazilian today, and he went, he'd been as good as Pelly. I went, I'm going to go that far, baby. <laughs> Hey Gary, that was like Real Madrid. <laughs> that was the best ever. That was the best ever. I tell you what, suddenly yeah. gave us a hard game. You made it look very ordinary there, didn't you? Well, I think you were set up. I thought you were really well, mate. That's the best ever. I mean, two and three at times. So yeah. 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 Robin and Cole, you never give him a kick. I don't know, mate. That was the best game you must have seen, eh? Oh, yeah. Brilliant, wasn't it? See you, yeah. 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 See yeah. you lads. You're looking very well. <laughs> Looks of this even. What an exciting, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah, brilliant. I bet you've been moaning like hell, haven't you? Oh, oh, top of performance, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. unbelievable. I mean, what, how can you go watch him? And seven well, days go for that to that. that. I just can't believe it. It's logic, it. didn't it? Ali and I have had some great times commentating in a promotion, cup finals, and following a small town around Europe. Sometimes he can get me into a bit of bother, as just before Borough played at Old Trafford in December 1998. He said we would win. OK, Borough were on a roll, fourth on the table, but they hadn't won at Old Trafford in 69 years. The words that came out to haunt me were, if Borough won at Old Trafford, I will show my backside in Vin's window. Seven days later and after a 3-2 win, the chant around Old Trafford from the Borough fans wasn't for the players, it was for me. Bernie, Bernie shows your bum. I even had to repeat it in the BBC TV show, They Think It's All Over. Jonathan Ross guessed it was me. The guy who showed his backside, Bernie Slevin. So much for 147 Borough goals. His bare face cheek that's still remembered. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's going to be good. I think I'm nuts, it's got to be a goal. It's this, it's like an arse, it's an arse, isn't it? Oh, Christ, I think it's a bloke, it's a bloke's arse. Ali also tried to get me into politics as the elected mayor of Middlesbrough. Ray Mallon won the election, but I think I gave him a bit of a fright for a while. I'd love to have worn that big gold chain. If things would have turned out different, this could have been my office, the mayor. When your name went into the heart to become mayor, uh, what did you think when I joined? Oh, I was horrified. <laughs> <laughs> I was horrified. I'll tell you what, I was particularly horrified when I seen your policies. To be honest with you, I thought it's a bit of a publicity stunt. And I had this feel that you probably wouldn't, um, wouldn't go for it. I have to be honest and say, I only wanted to wear that chain. I never see you with a chain. Uh, Every time uh, I see you, there's no chain. Oh, that's really Where a little bit like, you know. Have you got it under your shirt? I only ever wore it once. Let me tell you the story. I wore the chain for 15 <laughs> seconds, because I won't wear the chain. Right. And um, this particular day, they said, look, we need a photograph of you wearing the chain. So they got the chain, put it on my shoulders, took the photograph, took it back off me. Honestly, I never touched it. <laughs> then somebody pinched it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that. That's I why you bring I it up. That in the tabloids, yeah. So I've never seen the chain <laughs> since. So what's it really like being mayor? Day to day involvement, what, drinking coffee, champagne, puffing cigars, chauffeur driven. <laughs> what am I missing? Something like that. It's it's there's no glory here. You know, the bottom line is that what I try to do every day is just like get stuck into doing the job. I think the only thing that the previous regime gave me, in fact they left me, they left me a big bag of badges. What kind of badges? Anyway. Of badges? Yeah. I've got three for you. It says, yeah, there you are. What does it say? Like I met the mayor of Middlesbrough. <laughs> oh, I, I wear it with pride. <laughs> and that's about the only thing they give me. So, you, so you've got pride, a badge. Right? And give Alistair one. I'm going to get T-Buds on the back. The phones, man. Hey, hey, Lise. <laughs> hey, some teamer. <laughs> it's radio, not politics, that I love. And apart from the Borough commentary in Century FM, there's also the three legends. As Malcolm McDonald, Derek Gates and I talk about North East football every week night. Valentine's Day. Put a few for your last. We might as well write for them. So did you see the game, Gatesy? Rock and back scores after one minute. Amiobi scores after two for Newcastle. I had to go upstairs. I thought I'd been on the drink. 
I had to put my head under the cold water tub. Couldn't believe it. The show has a massive audience and occasionally we have a special guest. Steve Gibson joined us from Zurich and Chief Executive Keith Lamb came into the studio. It's a big change from when Keith used to do my contract to the borough. Uh, Keith, I look, for, I look forward to it. I'll tell you what, Keith, at least you turn up. We've been asking Sunderland and Newcastle representatives to come in for six years. <laughs> We've not seen Hayden or Hayden. I've got, to, I've got to be honest and admit that I'm not a big fan of uh, January signings. And I've said that publicly and privately to a lot of people. I said I'd never signed. Why, why is that, Keith? I'd never signed another player in January after we saw Michael Ricketts. But I thought he did well, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I love working in the radio and hopefully we'll carry on for many seasons to come, but it's still no substitute for playing. <laughs> Earning a living as a professional footballer is one of the luckiest things in life. And who knows, one of my sons, Dominic or Ryan, or even both, might one day carry on the slaving tradition and score a goal for the Borough. Now that would be an interesting game for me to commentate on. The saddest thing is, I cannot show Dominic and Ryan where Dad scored his goals. Ersan Park is no longer there, redeveloped for housing when Borough moved to the Riverside. And it's strange when I go back, as I still look for the Hallgate even though it's long gone. The spirit of the place remains, and for me they were the best times of my life. Luck played its part, starting out in Glasgow, surviving the rough and tumble with Glencairn to becoming Scotland's top scorer at Albion Rovers. And then there was the borough who answered my letter to give me my big break in England. I wish I'd made the move earlier, but the rear heels were immiscible, scoring in front of the Hallgate and getting the attention of Big Jack and the Republic. On radio I still get a chance to watch every game, but nothing compares with playing. That was unique. Pulling on that number seven shirt, scoring a goal and sharing it with the fans is something I will cherish for the rest of my life. Lucky Slavin, that's me. In the distance, you can see the, the city of Glasgow. Um, now, day like today, it looks like Spain. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're inside the building, obviously, it's different from Celtics. I think that's wood chip rolls. Come on. <laughs> if you can get wood chip the rolls. Mike is already on. Why right, give us a ball, Ryan. Up here. Oh, big cock, don't you start. <laughs> it's just a fantastic collection. For <laughs> sake, man. Honest to God. I feel as if that camera's right up my left nostril, Ross. 
And this is the bit I love about this sauna. And do you know why? Because you take all your hair off and you just go for it. It's great. And you get cheap there.